Okay, welcome back. In this video, we are going to talk a little bit about Adobe. That's right, the company that everyone hates to love and loves to hate, but I'm actually loving them these days. I want to share a little bit about my mobile setup and workflow. Now, I have done a series of videos over the last few months. I travel a lot during the year, and it's really important for me to have a workflow where I can start to gather my images and call them on the road, begin some basic edits at least. Sometimes they're final, but either way, I want them synced up to my catalog when I get home. And so, it's kind of fascinating to me because I talked to a lot of friends before I started this video and when I was working on my process. And it's kind of amazing how people get really confused about Adobe Creative Cloud. And this is what I want to demystify. And I'm going to show you some cool things that you can do with it. Real quick, before we dive in, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor today, who are the awesome folks over at Skillshare.com. If you haven't seen Skillshare, you should check them out. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes on photography, film production, design, and many other creative fields. A premium membership will give you unlimited access to high quality classes from experts in their fields. You can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities and do the work that you love. So I'll give you an example here. If you were still trying to get your head around Lightroom Classic CC, there is a wonderful course in here that is led by Tabitha Park that will explain everything from the ground up. So if you want to understand how catalogs work, how to cull and sort your images, how to use development sliders, and then even more advanced things like filters and so on and so forth, this is an excellent course tutorial in here. And I think it's one of the best ones I've seen. Skillshare is also one of the most affordable learning platforms out there. An annual subscription costs less than $10 a month. So if you head over to Skillshare using the link below in the description, you can get a two month free trial. So you've got absolutely nothing to lose or even purchase. So just go check out Skillshare today by using that link in the description. And I want to give a special shout out and thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this episode of The Art of Photography. Okay, so let's talk about cloud syncing with Adobe Creative Cloud or Adobe CC as sometimes it's shortened to. I have some visuals prepared, so let's go over to the computer here and I'm going to talk you through this. So right now, one of the things that's very confusing is we have two versions of Lightroom for the desktop. There is this one on the left, which is known as Lightroom Classic, and the one on the right is actually previously known as Lightroom Mobile. Now they're calling it Lightroom CC. Remember, the CC stands for Creative Cloud. Now, let's forget about both of these apps for just a second. This is going to help it make more sense to you guys. So I'm going to move those over. And real quick, I want to talk about the cloud. This is my cloud image here. And what is the cloud do? Well, the cloud is software, but it runs server side. So this is all controlled by Adobe. And what we can do is we can use devices to sync images with this cloud. I think everybody understands how cloud computing works, like Dropbox, something like that. So for instance, when I'm on the road, I actually own two iPads. I don't travel with both of them. I usually just take one. But either way, I have iPads. And so the other thing I might do is I might bring a camera. And this is typically the way I work. And what I do is I take my images from this camera. I use this awesome overpriced dongle and I put the SD card in here, sync this through the lightning port. And I also have one for USB-C and these images are imported onto the iPad and then I bring them into Lightroom Mobile, which is installed on the iPad. So let's say I put some images on this iPad here. What it's going to do is it's going to upload those to the cloud. Now, what actually gets uploaded to the cloud and how are these files managed? Well, essentially what the cloud does is it takes your source image. And so this could be a raw file. If you shot on a cell phone, maybe it's a JPEG or GIC file. Either way, it takes the source image. The second thing it takes is what Adobe calls the XML sidecar file, which is basically an XML document. It's text. It's really small, really portable. Now, remember, Lightroom does not do destructive editing, so I can make all these edits, and essentially what you're viewing in the end is Lightroom's interpretation with the edits that you made onto the raw file. So it does that by recording all of that information into that sidecar file. So those two things are synced up to the cloud. Now, what comes back down, I've oversimplified this by just saying a group of images, but let's say you have thousands of images. Well, it's going to keep those in the cloud. It's not going to download those onto every device. So for instance, if I take my second iPad here and I open up Lightroom CC, what it's going to do is it's actually going to download preview images to that iPad. Now, when I open an image to edit it, it gives me a slightly larger file and I can work on it from there. Both of these iPads are now synced up through the cloud. So any images that I edit on the second iPad will reflect on the first. Now, most people, including myself, don't try travel with two iPads. So what's a more uh, realistic situation here? Well, I've got one for you. So I have a bunch of cell phones. Why on earth, Ted, do you have a bunch of cell phones? Well, I'm 
actually working on a video that's requiring a lot of work where I'm actually going to compare some cell phones and I'm really interested in what Google have done with the Pixel 3 and a lot of the computational imaging and I want to compare that to an iPhone and a Samsung Galaxy so on and so forth so I actually have four phones right now that are synced up with Adobe Cloud so basically I have installed Lightroom on each one of these devices and what's really cool is images because I'm testing these cameras I take on the iPhone for instance versus the Pixel 3 versus the Samsung S10 these all all sync up into the cloud I can view them on any device and what's really cool is when I want to do some more serious editing and I want to get onto a desktop we have more that syncs up with the cloud so let's bring Lightroom mobile into the equation this will now sync up with the cloud too let's put it over here I'm running out of space for crazy arrows so now I can sync back up to Lightroom CC and we'll come back to classic in a second but there's also another point where you can access the cloud that most people don't realize which is the Adobe website which is lightroom.adobe.com so if you have a creative cloud account you can sign in with a web browser and view everything that's in the cloud collection now how does Lightroom classic come into this equation it actually talks to the cloud as well but in a slightly different way by default and let me explain so this is kind of what I deal with when I'm traveling I have mobile devices I have a camera that I will bring images into a mobile device well when I get back to the studio I have Lightroom classic running and this is where my entire catalog of images lives on a raid server over here that is backed up in the cloud and so this is my catalog of every image that I've ever done for the most part that is in Lightroom and it's a massive catalog. Anyway, what happens is when I get back to the studio, I fire up Lightroom Classic and it's going to actually take all the images that are in the cloud and it's going to download them as long as I'm signed in and it's going to sync them into my local catalog here. This is really cool. Now, why is this cool? Well, it allows me to use the cloud just for a mobile workspace. Now, theoretically, you could put your entire catalog of images, everything you've ever done into the cloud. I actually know somebody who has done that. He has access to every image that he's ever made. It's like 12 terabytes or something crazy, all in the Adobe Creative Cloud. He can get to them from any device. He can get to them from a web browser. I don't quite need that type of mobile access. And the reason I say that is because when you actually price out what it's gonna cost you to get that kind of storage with Adobe, it becomes astronomically expensive and originally that's what put me off to even using the cloud at all because with your account your basic creative cloud account you get like 100 gigabytes of space right which is not very much if you're looking for more long-term solutions for storage and also Adobe and I think it's probably because a couple years ago there were a lot of syncing issues in the cloud they do not recommend that you use it as a backup solution that you really need a third party to be backing your catalog up as well anyway that gets confusing and beyond the point of this but my point is is that I was turned off to it because the storage space was so expensive and I hope this is something that Adobe decide to come down on in the next few years. We will see. But what is really cool is go back to our model here. I have downloaded everything that on my trip here that I've put into the cloud. All these cell phones are synced up, my iPad, any images I took with cameras, they're all in the cloud. Now when I come back to the studio, everything downloads to Lightroom and now it lives in this catalog. So here's what's amazing is I can actually take all of my data in the cloud and the fastest way to do this is actually to use the web browser and let's say I just go delete all of my images in the cloud oh my gosh are they gone no they're not they're actually in my local storage still so Lightroom Classic will talk to the cloud but it doesn't delete anything on its local catalog when you delete what's in the cloud so for this reason that 100 gigabytes of space actually works really well for me I've made it usable but if you need more storage you can probably just get a little bit more storage to use and it's just a temporary solution while you're traveling now again this isn't a great backup plan here but there are other ways to do that I use drives and stuff to back up SD cards while I'm on the road the DJI Copilot and stuff I'll link up to a playlist here if you want to see the whole mobile workflow it's a little beyond the scope of this video to talk about but that's essentially what I do and so I'll clear it off after a trip when I know everything is synced up and downloaded now here's the other cool thing is I can actually use Lightroom Classic to push images to the cloud and it's really cool how you do that so if you're in library view and if you're not just hit the letter G on your keyboard it will take you there over on the left hand side you will see all these folders here now I love to use folders to organize my catalog a little pro tip here because I'm doing a review with a bunch of different phones this could be cameras it could be lenses whatever that is I like to create smart folders so basically I'm not looking at a library stuff and I'm having to go through the metadata and figure out what was taken on what phone I can just set up folders and so basically you set up a folder with criteria and that criteria is let's say give me every image taken on the Google Pixel 3 give me every image that was taken on an iPhone 10x Max whatever and you can see that so it's pretty easy setup 
I also do folders for selects. Well, there's a number of ways you can do folders, but I might grab, like for instance, this portraits folder. Let's say I want to push all of those images to the cloud. That is something that I want to refer to on mobile devices or I'm going to be traveling, whatever that is. If you look all the way over to the left, there's a little box you can check. And when I tick that, you're going to see that it's going to start syncing photos. And if I look up at the top here, it says syncing 172 photos. That's how you turn on sync. There's a second way you can do it where you can actually, if I just right click on the folder and you go down and you say sync with Lightroom, it will do the same thing. And so what this does is it's going to push things to the cloud. And once again, I can turn off this syncing, but the cloud for me is just basically a central hub where I can have everything synced up while I'm on the road. I can get to files, I can get to images, and I can start working on them if I have time on an airplane or in an airport. Now, this isn't totally bulletproof at this point, and I think this is important to mention because you do have some sticks in here because you're dependent on an internet connection. And so, for instance, with the phones, I don't have all of these hooked up with accounts, so they basically just act as a giant iPod touch. So I have to have Wi-Fi on those, or I can tether them to my iPhone. And you could be capped in terms of how much data you can move. So these are things you need to think about. So this isn't perfect yet, but as long as you're traveling in an area where you have decent access to Wi-Fi, this can be a huge boon for what you're doing when you travel. And the fact that I can come home and everything is already synced up, it's pretty cool. So I would love to know what you guys think. If you're using anything like this, drop me a comment below. I will see you in the next video. Until then, later.